Hi, it's Steven from LearnCMM.com. So this week I installed Calypso 2025 version 8.0 and I'm kind of excited about this version because, you know, previous versions they didn't have a whole lot new from one to the next. But this one actually does have some significant new features and I'd like to explain those to you briefly. We'll go th quickly through them. I just have a sample model here of a turbine blade that my son modeled for me in SolidWorks, by the way. And Zeiss is not giving me any promotion or bonuses for this. I just feel like it's helpful to know, is it really worth it to upgrade? So these won't be really in order of priority, but I'll just go through the ones that I feel like are the most significant. Now, before you upgrade, make sure you have a good enough computer with good graphics. Zeiss recommends an NVIDIA graphics card. And if you go to your NVIDIA settings, you need to make sure that when you go to manage 3D settings, it's set to Autodesk motion builder compatible and the graphics card itself should be powerful enough with plenty of ram if you're upgrading from an older version it should be at least clips of 2018 or newer and you should have windows 10 or windows 11 preferably i'm currently running windows 11. one of the bigger new features you'll notice is that the gdnt engine is now streamlined and what that means is these characteristics with boxes around them are a little bit different than the classic gdnt which you'll find down here. Now these are still valid and very useful, but the new GDNT characteristics have a little bit more capability. Um, they may be a still a little bit rough around the edges, but they're better than they used to be in the beta version. So for example, in GDNT position, you'll notice in here, we have a little bit different icons. We have these datum icons and this down here. So if we put in let's say position of a cylinder and our primary datum, secondary and tertiary. This allows for application of maximum material boundary or maximum material requirement in the ISO standard. So that's, it's literally the same thing, but this apparently has more flexibility with applying datum shift from the datums in the classic GDT characteristics. Sometimes these would be grayed out more often than not, it seemed like. And up here, you can apply the MMC on the feature. And if you actually wanna use a secondary alignment instead, you would go down here, change the way it's calculated to loose, and then you have the option of using a coordinate system. So a lot of things are similar, but this also is supposed to have better capability for applying simultaneous requirements so if several position callouts are using the same datum references with the same material boundary requirements, then they would be using the datum shift together as a group. So these will be interesting to test out and play around with. Also, something worth noting is if you go to Extras, Settings, and Measurement under the gd &T tab, you can decide whether you want the ISO standard or the ASME standard to be default on those new GDNT engine characteristics. So that determines how the features are evaluated, whether they're constrained a certain way or not. Similar to that, another thing you'll notice if you go to extras, settings, and measurement, under the form datum tab, we have this new option down here where we can compute a coordinate system according to the ISO 5459. In other words, it's going to apply this concept in this image to constrain secondary and tertiary datums back to the higher level datums in the reference frame. And this will be handy to make sure everything is being evaluated properly. Next on the list, if you use one of the new GDNT profile tolerances, in the PyWeb plot, you have an option of outputting the point list and you can show all the points in your report, or you might want to just show min and max points. Under the GDNT angularity, we have the option of determining the exact nominal direction. So if it is a compound angle, that's in here too. Then under resources, utilities, we have a GDNT best fit, which is new in here. This allows us to use the 
alignment that was generated from a GDT position or profile has a coordinate system that can be used for other measurements or other characteristics. One of my favorite new features in 2025, which I've been waiting for years, is the ability to view the CAD model from a specific alignment. So if I want to view the model normal to or parallel to a surface that's at a weird angle, I can create an alignment on that surface and then go to here and view the model from that alignment. If I go to alignment two, this is at a different angle. So I really love that feature. Next on the list under CAD modification, CAD model transformation. Now when you do any offsets and you click apply, it will zero out all your values each time so that you don't accidentally do something again and again. For example, if you're doing a translation and then later you want to do a rotation, it's easy to forget to zero this out in the older versions, but it does that zeroing out for you. Now something to be aware of, while I was testing Calypso 2025, I realized that the simulation mode was totally not working. It was very slow and the probe wasn't touching the part. So I contacted Zeiss and they said they're aware of that issue and there should be a patch or a service pack coming out for that soon. So you can go to your Zeiss portal and click on the notification button, which will allow you to have email notifications when the next service pack is available. So once that is resolved, I think overall, this version will be a nice improvement. Now the next new feature that is really handy and I think will have really good applications is the ability to do a controlled radius and a contour radius. So you have to have a curve on that radius to begin with. And this one you'll find under size, curve dimensions, and curve contour. So we have contour radius and a rounded edge. So in here we select the curve that we already have to begin with and then we can enter in the two different radius limits. So let's say this is 10 and 12. It shows you those limits. That actually looks pretty good. I was just guessing. So we might go a little bit tighter than that. Maybe 8 and 10. So you kind of get the gist of it. This will really help in the cases where the radius is less than 90 degrees and you want to evaluate that surface because in a traditional circle measurement oftentimes the circle diameter and radius is projected and you get a failing result. The other option under there if we go to curve dimensions curve contour there's the rounded edge and this is basically an edge break check so you can verify if that is a chamfer or a radius and then you put in the minimum radius. So if we say five millimeter on that curve. So you, the curve would scan over the edge break and it gives you a zone that could be an edge break at a 45 or it could be a radius. The next new feature is called soft touch mode. If you have a vast XXT TL1 sensor, this will be really helpful because the probe can measure flexible surfaces or you can use a small delicate probe more quickly. You don't have to have it drive so slowly. And you check the back of your sensor. There should be a label on there. Most of them I've seen are a TL3, but if you do have a TL1, it allows for more sensitive, quick measurements in the soft touch mode. The next thing you'll notice in 2025, if you have a special offset in your alignment, this will be indicated by the yellow highlight, which is handy so you can know it's right there. And in the characteristic, if you have actual data, it will have this little indicator inside this window. So even if this is blocking your characteristic list, you can quickly see whether it's in tolerance or not. Next thing you'll notice is that under resources, you won't find the results to file. It's actually renamed file output. And it's a little bit simplified, looks different, but most of the options are there. Table file is here and merge file. Also, your measuring points is there, but there's no limit option anymore. And 
the settings here, you can decide if you want to include curve points and so on. You can also go to Extras, Settings, and Environment under File Output, and this would be your default values for any new programs. You also have the option of closing all your programs at once. If you have a whole bunch of programs and you just want to close them at the end of the day, so if I go to Close Calypso, it's going to give me the option of saving everything at once or nothing if I just want to close without saving anything. And this will apply to all open programs. And similar to that, under Extras, Settings, Environment, there's a new Auto Close option where we can close measurement plans and or Calypso after a certain time. And one last feature that is kind of handy, under the question mark here, you can go to New in Calypso, and it gives you an overview of what's new in this version and some graphics. There's also a few little videos. Um, some of them are kind of hard to see the details, but it gives you an overview of what's new. So if you are going to upgrade, keep in mind that you should never install an older version of Calypso once a newer version is already installed. So if you do need to go back and forth between older and newer, make sure the older version is installed first and then the newer one after that. And if I were you, I would go to your Zeiss portal and sign up for the email notifications. Anytime there's a new service pack, you'll get notified and then you can install that right away. It helps address any weird bugs or issues. Overall, I like the new features. I like the ability to view the model from a different alignment the new GDT features, the contour radius, those are all great. But other than that, I hope that helps you guys and have an awesome rest of your day.